everybody, this is Pat and Heidi from Rain Country Homestead. God is good all the, all the time. time. And today we want to talk about how to influence your spouse to get on board with prepping or frugality living. And one really good way is this right here. <laughs> well, what I was going to say is um, go over to Amazon and under our link... <laughs> Um, look up shot callers. <laughs> I guess no. it depends on which spouse it is, huh? Yeah. Um, shot callers and, you know, sharp implements to goad people yeah. and uh, you know, that probably wouldn't work that well. But Anyway, all jokes aside, you know, a lot of times you get into a relationship and all of a sudden you get on board and you say like, you know what, I want to make a life change. And, you know, getting the other spouse involved is like starting and stopping a train. Well, it's pretty near, takes a lot of energy to do that. Um, once you get into motion, you know, and you're, you know, you're going out to eat every night and you're going out and mm -hmm. seeing the latest movie that comes out or you're buying the latest video game that comes across the, uh, you know, whatever about, about you crossed your bow is uh, I mean, a lot of times that is just it's really hard to go from one lifestyle to another. So, how do you how do you get around that? How do you get above and beyond that? How do you how do you get them to get kind of crazy like you and want to yeah. start uh, living off of uh, stale bread and <laughs> dried beans? <laughs> And we, we're approaching this because we actually have, have had people ask us the same questions several times. Right. And I want to start off by saying this specifically to the ladies. Um, it is in our nature to want to nag. I'm yes. not saying, amen. I'm not saying that men <laughs> don't do that to some degree, but really women, ladies, we are the most guilty of nagging. And nagging is the, going to be the last way you're going to be able to sway your husband into anything uh, unless he just gets tired of hearing it and then he, he gives in but that's not the right way because it's going to cause maybe he gives in and does it but it's not going to be for it because he wants to and you're not going to see as much benefit out of it this should be something that he does because he wants to and he sees the benefits and then as a team, you work together. But well, yes, number one, absolutely do not nag. Typically, if you're a real man, you don't put up with too much nagging. And I'm not talking about being physical. I'm just talking about men kind of, you know, bristle up and nope, not going to do it. Uh, just because I'm the man and it's not my idea or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, Heidi and I, you know, we're going to talk about relationships on another video is that typically a man does not do well with nagging. Right. He either clams up, goes away, or disappears, or um, yep. a lot of times he's, he just gets tolerant. And you know, now I'm gonna put a scripture right here that applies to that, because women, you need, ladies, you need to hear this. I know I did too, so I'm, I'm as guilty as any other lady at this. Sorry, and and end to interrupting. I'm terrible at that too. I'm still a work in progress. Anyway. Anyway, you know, you're gonna come across our videos, and there's a whole gamut or spectrum of folks out there that um, you know takes light of our joking, and that's that's all it is. Is when we when we come across, she comes up with in with the frying pan, and that's been an ongoing joke. And yeah, sometimes I, joke. you know, I say, you know, well. And get that woman in the kitchen when you know with a shock and prod it's all tongue in cheek uh, we don't do that here no. on a regular basis <laughs> He's, he has never had to <laughs> no it's um <laughs> you know we've been together for 30 years and um you know we've gone through a lot of trial and error and you know young Yep. you know th working things out and right. and now we can we can joke and have fun with each other and that's that's going to be part of our 
you know, our video on, uh, yeah, you know, relationships. Yeah, we yeah, will we, we, come up. I think it was about two years ago we were asked to do that. And uh, we were going to, but then a few other channels started doing it. And, and that we kind of wanted to leave that to them for the time being. And sure. we didn't want to look like we were trying to out talk them or overdo them or whatever so we wanted to give them some space and now it's just a matter of remembering to get to it <laughs> right yeah we've had we've had a number of people uh make mention of that so uh that's something we plan on doing in the near future i think hopefully hopefully in near future but yeah so we want to focus more on how to get that you know that other spouse the, on the right track the deadbeat <laughs> yeah <laughs> just so it's really tough. That's a tough, tough question to address because it's a pretty sensitive one. Because because when you know when you get get in the mindset of, wow, I really want to get out of debt. That's just not the nature of today. That's not not the mindset. We are inundated. Every single one of us in us has the drive to survive and the drive to do better and the drive to want more, more, yep. more in our jobs, mm -hmm. more in our houses. We look across the street and we see so-and-so, they have this. Well, we want that, we want more. And that's, you know, um, the sales industry and the marketing industry know that about us yep. and they feed on that. As a spouse, <clears throat> realizing that and wanting to get out of that paradigm or that matrix, <laughs> yeah. uh, you have to realize that and think of your spouse, whether it be male or female, and think what, what, what drives them to do what they do. And what is it that drives them to do what they do? and try to look at a way to well basically market to them what it is that's going to change their mind so let's say you know like for a guy guys are driven a lot of times by their stuff what i've had what you know what have i accomplished and you know, a lot of us might measure our, our success by what we have. Because of the world we live in, you know, we are, we're, we're so relative. We're so um, competitive sometimes mm -hmm. in that way. And, and a lot of us have right. to maybe grow out of that. I, I, I don't know how to say that other than age has a way of, of, of maturing or right. changing the way that we think. And I, For a lot of people. I'm not saying that people that are that way are immature. I'm just saying that there's different facets and different yeah. things that hold themselves important in like different blocks of our lives as we go along. One of those things is trying to figure out, okay, well, you know, how do we get, how do we get over and past the car and the house, and the boat, and the quad, and the vacations, and all this stuff that actually just kind of inundate our lives and draw from our financial basket. You know, we have to figure out what it is, because you know, we, we go from day to day, and we get, we get so stressed out, we get so inundated with bills it's like how do we overcome this well mm -hmm. one bite at a time i know there's different <clears throat> financial programs out there that that uh you know dave ramsey is is a big one for the christian world and we st actually started watching those and yeah because somebody and let us borrow them and we have nothing against dave ramsey i think yeah. it's actually from what i understand it's a great program it's it's you know, like if, if you have no idea where to start, that's a good right. place to start. We started watching those things. It's like, yeah, well, we're doing this. And we're already well, doing all that. We, we already think that way. And, yeah. and um, of course, so, we were already in the process yeah, of we, you know, paying off the house anyway. So Right. And in short, you know, start with those small bills first and then work up from there. Because if you can get the small 
credit card paid off or uh, you, maybe you got some sort of rent to own furniture or something like that. If you can get that stuff paid off and get your mindset in and try to get your spouse into the mindset of, guess, look, look at how much money we're saving by if we get this paid off. Mm -hmm. And it might be a small thing and, the, and, and your spouse might think, well, that's, that's nothing, you know, that's, yep. that's not a big thing. But you know what? You know, if you think of it like that snowball and have analogies, you know, that you can share with your husband or your wife that if you start with a small snowball and you start rolling that thing up, it starts getting big. Well, if you take that small debt and you start getting that thing paid off, you know, that that's, gets bigger. And if you get this debt over here because you got the, you, the money that you're saving from this rent to own furniture loan that you got, you got that paid off. Now that that furniture is now yours. That extra money, if you make it, if you somehow encourage your spouse to look at it, it's like, wow, okay, well now we got this extra money. It's almost it's like having a raise. It's almost like somebody giving us that extra fifty dollars a month, and then you take that fifty dollars and start putting it on that credit card. Well, you get that credit card paid off. Cut that sucker up if it's gonna. If it's going to, yeah. yeah, I mean, if, if it's it, a weakness, if it's a weakness, get rid of it, Cancel get it. rid of it. If, it, if you guys, <clears throat> if you guys go out to eat every single day, um, maybe that's something else that you can look at. And, and guys, it's every situation is different from yep. the next. And if let's say you just don't think you have time to prepare meals, well, there might be some other something else that you can do to reduce that cost to maybe both of you have to work maybe maybe both of you feel like you have to work if that spouse is willing to sit down with you and say hey you know we can uh we can save money here by getting rid of this debt over here right. and each and every one of you kind of know more so than any of us putting out these videos and saying, hey, you should do this. <laughs> you know your spouse. Right. And you know what their weaknesses are. You know what your weaknesses are. And try to find a common ground where, right. where they're at. You know? I think if it's approached in a positive mindset, so like you were saying, you sit down and say, you know what, we should talk about our finances and let's see if we can figure out a way to um to better ourselves to get to get ourselves in a better position mm -hmm. and i think if it's approached in a non-accusatory way that's that's going to be the best way to approach it from either side right whether it be from the husband to the wife or the wife to the husband as uh, being you know don't put the blame on them like it's all your fault that we're in debt or if i can interject there what what can I sacrifice? Right. Yeah, I, I feel, you know, I, I wanted to interject there because I think that's right. really important because a lot of us will say, well, Heidi, you know, I, I think you really, if, if you cut this and you cut that and, um, you know, if you stop, you know, uh, buying the soap operas and eating the bonbons, um, you know, Never we can really... Never either of those things. <laughs> Just so you know. We can, we can save money. Where's that pen at? I got to you're, <laughs> you're not too right close there. to the iron. <laughs> but anyways, you know, I say that tongue in cheek. But, you know, a lot of times we'll sit down and, and we want to hang on to our stuff. Right. But we want the other, other spouse mm -hmm. to give up their stuff. But a lot of times, you know, and, and back to what we're talking about is how do we get our spouse on board you have to think about what you're willing to sacrifice. Right. You know, you as being the one that's putting it on the table, it's like, I want to start saving money and I want to start putting stuff away. I want to start, I want to start saving up so we can prep or we can, we can, uh, you know, you know, plan for our future or retirement. Um, what is it that you're willing to give up? And mm -hmm. the spouse is, hmm, well, well, what can I give up? You know, can, can right. I forego that fishing trip, you know, or that hunting yeah. trip, or, yep. you know, I think those things are those necessary. Are well, I, I wouldn't want you to forego, <laughs> forego those things either, because they fill the freezer with good meat, not yeah, store-bought garbage. That's our argument, you know, so but no. anyway, <laughs> um, you know, is it, you know, is that price per pound, I mean, is it, <laughs> can you buy it 
buy half a beef cheaper. Sometimes you can. But anyway, uh, my, my point was is that, you know, we have to evaluate our own right. personal um, things that are actually cutting into the budget and make, right. you know, see, see if there's things that, that we can do and some, you know, to, to cut back on, on monthly, ex monthly expenses. And you might be surprised that, you know, maybe that spouse will say, wow, she's willing, she's willing right. to sacrifice or, or he's willing to sacrifice that, uh, that particular thing that's really near and dear to them. Uh, maybe, maybe I can do the same right. thing and that might catch on like wildfire and you might be surprised. And also when we really started looking to cut back on different things, we, we looked at it collectively. How is this going to benefit us in the future? You know, well, you know, I, yes. I, I can forego this or, or I can put up with this old tool. It's, mm -hmm. you know, just limping along. I can probably fix it cheaper than I can buy a new one or, or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, I drove a <clears throat> 92, 91, some, some kind of yeah. early nineties. Honda. You know, I gave up my manhood. I, I completely, you know, put my testosterone on the line to drive a little Geo Metro yeah, back that, and that forth was the to next work one. for years. The first know? one was the Honda. He got it, what, paid it $1,500 for it and wore it out. Yep, yep. We wore it. wore it out, used it up. We used it up, wore yeah. it out, fixed it, and wore it out some more. And, um, and you know, finally I, it was just done. Yeah. It, to follow the engine well with blew a head gasket and it was more expensive to fix it than it was to yeah. just make it disappear. Yeah. At any rate, um, <laughs> I just I just think that there's there's things that we we have to detach ourselves from the television and the commercialism. Right. Some of Christmas and some of the holidays that they actually pummel into you and make you mm -hmm. feel guilty doing. Right. Um, some of those things you you have to you have to really visit and at least find ways to simplify them. Yeah, and say what what can I sacrifice here? Mm -hmm. If you can get your spouse on board with that mentality, so in the end you're both benefiting from it, and and the in the end, you know that five ten dollars that you have gets into being okay. I'm starting to save. 20s and I'm starting to save 50s mm -hmm. and I'm starting to save 100 and if you can get get them on board for that um, I know for a, for a man um, having financial security is a really important thing but we get so locked up in the well we got to have this and we got to mm -hmm. have that and we got to have the brand new Ford F-350 uh, 2020 that's you know just around the corner we've got to have it just to met just so I can look cool well, guys, do we really need the Ford F-350? <laughs> well, yeah, we can pull the trailer. We can pull our, you know, 50-foot uh, fifth wheel with it, you know. And, well, do you really need the 50-foot fifth wheel? You know, we got by with a 1978 kit companion, and I rebuilt the whole back end of it. Yep, um, it was our first and But trailer. it was a cheap trailer. Mm -hmm. And, you know. For a family of four. Man, we gotta we gotta make sacrifices yep. and to to get on to get on board with this and to get your spouse on board with that start with the small things right it's really important that you start with the small things because you know you know i don't want you touching my corner you know mm -hmm. i don't want you touching my stuff but maybe if we're willing to sacrifice some of our things some of that might start to rub off on that other spouse and might say well you right. know Gosh, you know, she's willing to make sacrifices. Well, maybe, maybe I can make, you know, a few little sacrifices here that don't hurt too bad. But, you know, gosh, you know, maybe I don't need the 72-inch television set this year. Maybe I can wait till next year. But after you start making those sacrifices and you start saving, you can you can kind of see how addictive that is. Right. So I think the, the, you know, coming back to this whole idea, you know, start with something that your spouse knows means a lot to you, but, uh, you know, you, go, you have to evaluate yourself and say, okay, if it, is it that daily cup of coffee stand coffee? Because, you know, mm. those can be five, six, seven dollars a cup from what I understand. 
And boy, that's going to save you a lot of money. And if you're, if, if you're like, you know what, I'm willing to give this up so that we can have this thing. I wouldn't turn around and say, so what are you willing to give up? I would just say, you know what, I'm going to do this. And then what's happening, you know, because I think this is going to be the best thing to do is leading by example. You know, as your spouse sees you being a little more um, savvy on maybe how much electricity you're using are you you know are you turn using less lights are you are you uh making sure you turn the water off between you know while you're brushing your teeth and still letting it continue to run it can be sometimes those little things those little changes that you're making you're living by example but even as the bigger things as you start saving money and they start seeing i, I think a lot of times though what it what it you know, besides all this, for some people, they're not really going to get it mm -hmm. until something happens. Uh, their big, huge Ford, fancy Ford, all of a sudden has a meltdown and there's no money to fix it because they're so in debt with that truck. But because you've been being frugal and set that money aside, oh, look, honey, you don't have to, you know, forego your this or that, or, you know, you don't have to wait to have your truck fixed. Here's some cash that I saved up because I stopped having my daily latte or whatever it was. I think sometimes those are going to be the things that make the biggest impact. But, you know, obviously you never know what that's going to be. But anyway, living by example, showing that you're willing, you're willing to give up something. And then I also think that another thing is this might be more something that with the husband towards the wife. Let's say the wife is wanting... Uh, I don't know, some kind of big fancy brand new whatever. And whether it be the, the, the newest uh, range or the newest washer and dryer, when what they have is still just fine. Or maybe they want a big $2,000 Gucci purse or something and yet they, they can easily make do with a $20 purse or a homemade purse. I think probably the best way to approach that would be to say, well, let's do this first. Let's try to get this debt paid off first so that frees up more money for you to be able to get this new thing because really you can make it, you can make do with what you have, you know, for now. And let's pay this off first because this is really important. And like I said, I think this is going to be more a place where a man's going to be able to say that to a woman than the other way around. But um, I know that's going to be hard for some people to do. But honestly, uh, if we're going to look especially at, at, at you families out there that are more biblically leaning, it is the man's job to do that. It is to say, you know what? I mean, he can do it lovingly and kindly. He doesn't have to be a brood about it and just say, you know what, honey, I, I understand that you really like this. You really want this. And, and I get it. But we do have these other bills that are that you know, are more important that need to be taken care of first. Let's get these things paid off so that we can take care of that. And then hopefully by that example, maybe she will reevaluate, do I need a $2,000 purse? <laughs> really? And, you know, maybe presenting some other ideas that wouldn't that money, that $2,000 be better spent on something a little more practical and so on and so forth. I mean, there's really, there's good loving ways that a person can approach this. It, it's still going to be hard. It's not, there's, you know, there's really not one easy answer for all of this because. Well, we all like brand new stuff. Yeah, we, all, we, all, we all like, yeah. you know, that kind of keeps us going, keeps us charged. Is that some I people have get, an addiction. To some it. people really get into the latest fashion. Uh, guys too, you know. Uh, you know, we we don't really, as you can tell. <laughs> we, uh, but anyway, um, not us. <laughs> you know, bringing that other other person, other uh, spouse, or even the kids, um, kind of into line, if you will, is boy, you got to have that that a really important thing to have is that caring relationship. You know, not the one-sided mm -hmm. thing that right. one person is always given and the other person's always taking. Right. I'm not sure that there's a whole lot of hope in that other than leading by example. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you say, you know, hey, look, 
how much we've saved on our electricity bill by me running around behind you all month and shutting the lights off, you know, <laughs> or, you know, shutting the hot water tank off whenever you can, or, you know, turn off the heat in a room that's not being used or something. Uh, you got to have heat in a room where you can get mold, but anyway, uh, turning it down or down to 50 or whatever the case may be that, you know, gets the, you know, gets the bill down to where it's an actual tangible visible thing that that spouse can can look at and say oh yeah look at that you know and maybe by uh, you know what's kind of a waste you know because you're you're not actually saving that money at that point you can say well we could save this money or now we can go out and and have a hamburger or something you know you know that might be a physical tangible yeah thing that's right. so, okay well we did save some money here didn't we what else can we do well we can do this or even this. take a portion of that money that was saved and reward and, and use it as a reward and say, right. okay, we're going to put this away so we can get something Eggs. better down the road. Precisely. And yeah, I mean, there's, there's various different ways that this can be approached, but I think it, it, it can, the actual it can be done. Yeah. And I, I think I want to touch on this is, um, the actual best way to, bring you both to the same avenue is is necessity yep. um, having some sort of event happen uh, by way of the truck breaking down or losing a job or somebody getting sick you know one of the two of you getting sick or actually presenting your spouse with that scenario and say, look, you know, this, this, this is happening all around us. We're not exempt. Right. You know, we might be happy, we might be happy and healthy and, and don't have any, any, anything to worry about at the moment. But you know, what, what would happen if, if this happened or, you know, let's say you guys might watch a movie and it might have a situation where you know some of these disaster movies that come up you know um, some of these things aren't far-fetched and some <clears throat> some of these things can happen um, a lot of these movies and different things that come out are based on you know things that could happen mm -hmm. um, earthquakes or whatever the case or fire or whatever like that you know if any of you live in California or on the West Coast man that last year uh, place almost burnt to the ground. I mean, there are some, some little towns uh, that actually did burn to the ground. And that makes some people think. It's like, yep. you know, do we have anything in place uh, besides insurance that's going to get us through um, a cataclys yeah, a cataclysmic <laughs> problem? And these things are real. And health is a real thing. Job loss is a real thing. Natural disasters are a yep. real thing. And if you can get somehow articulate that to your, your significant other, yep. that, um, these are you know, these are, these are real things. You and know? if you and, can show, if you know people or you know, that real people that they know that you can uh, say, hey, this happened to so-and-so, even mm -hmm. if it's just sharing our videos with them and saying, you know, this happened to them or looking at the comments down below, because I'm sure there'll be people that will be putting comments down below right. that will share their own situations or, or even, and while I'm saying it, you know, how, if you had a spouse that is now on board, but they weren't initially, whether it be with the prepping or the frugality, because I've said it before, these two go hand in hand, frugality and prepping go together. And because uh, being frugal helps you prep and prepping helps you be frugal and so on and so forth. So, right. uh, you know, share your stories of how that worked for you. And uh, so people, we, you know, they can learn from that. So anyway, you can use those and say, here, here's what this person did. But I'm sure that we all know family members or close oh, friends sure. that have been through some kind of crisis. And uh, yeah, get out of whether the they range. were prepared financially or whatever for it uh at least say this happened to them right how you know how why do we think it could never happen to us yeah we gotta so. get out of the get out of the <clears throat> you have to get out of the state of denial 
Right. Um, in some way, sometimes if you if you just happen to watch a movie or some sort of series that you know dictates hard times, it's like you know um, one thing that helped buffer us or help us to uh, alleviate some of these um, situations where we go doubt. Why not? Why not? You know, take a little bit of money and set it aside. Why not? Why don't we just pay off this credit card? We really don't mm -hmm. need it. Um, I tell you, you know, with Heidi and I, just taking this, starting with that small credit card debt or that small loan and getting that stuff paid off, it's just kept snowballing, and mm -hmm. we had started having fun doing it. Yep. You know, it's like, hey, the you know, is exciting. We would be excited, especially for the, watching that principal drop on the house. Oh yeah, we 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 just uh, we'd be just looking with excitement, you know. Heidi would say, "Look at the, you know, look how much uh, money is going towards principal now." And I said, "Absolutely, you know, that's that's." Key. I remember and when we first started talking, it, it was, was like, "Okay, I think we can get the house paid off in two years," and then and then a little, I don't know if it was the same day or later than you know a month later, Patrick said, "I think we can get it paid off in a year," and I was like, "No, I don't see it happening," and <laughs> and yet. He wanted us to think that way. Well, let's just pretend that we can. Let's try. And so we did, and we paid it off in even less than that. Mm -hmm. It was amazing how it happened. Did we have more money coming in or anything like that? No, we were still making the same amount of money. But it was our mindset changed, and we started yeah. finding more ways to cut and cut and cut, and it right. got to be... Yeah, it got to be fun. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. That's it. Yeah, if you can look at it as a challenge... And, you know, I know guys, you know, some of us say we, we like to look at things as a challenge and we like, we like long-term goals, seeing it a tangible thing. It's like, okay, well, the things that we're going to buy from now on are things that are going to, are avenues to change money and avenues to get us out of debt. As far as uh, getting your spouse on board, you got to find out what makes them tick. Right. And, you know, that it's, it has nothing to do with manipulation. It has everything to do with with determining what their goals mm -hmm. are and you have to take short-term goals and start turning them into long-range goals because a lot of us are for the here and now yeah if we want self-gratitude right now um, I got paid today how can I spend this money I got paid today I want to forget all about life and I want to go watch a movie or buy a trinket or a gadget or a tool. I mean, that's, that's kind of my weakness. <laughs> I hope this video helps you guys out. Um, it's been a, been a long one waiting to come to fruition. So if you guys have any comments, any suggestions, any requests, uh, you know, leave them in the comment section below. Share with us the things that, um, you know, that might help out other people in the realm of kind of get, you know, trying to get them on board. And if there's any other requests that you'd like to see in a video, let us know in the comment section right. below. Okay. Well, that's it. So, thanks for watching. Take care. And God bless.